Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil and today we continue talking about operational semantics. Operational semantics is one of the three main formalisms used to specify the semantics of programming languages. The others are axiomatic semantics and denotational semantics. The key characteristics of operational semantics is the definition of an interpreter for the language. In other words, we specify the semantics of the programming language by showing how each construct of this language actuates an abstract machine, that is, an architecture made of mathematical expressions instead of wires and flip-flops. Here's the definition of our interpreter for part of our toy language. The machine itself is defined by these arrow operations that you can see right here. When we write t arrow t prime, we mean that the term t on the left side can evolve to a term t prime in one step. Notice that some terms cannot change. They are already in what we call normal form. For instance, true and false will never change. There is no arrow with either true or false on the left side. And there are terms that can change. The only one in our current grammar is the if-then-else, the term in red here. There are three different ways in which a such term can take a step. These are the three rules on the right side of the figure, right here. They are called if true, if false, and if. Notice that some of these rules are always applicable once we have a term in the right format. These rules are called axioms, and they are in blue above. So whenever we have if true, anything, there is always a rule that we can apply, and this rule is called if true. And there are rules that are theorems. We call them like this because they depend on some premise. The premise is this expression above the line, right here. In this example, we have one theorem, which is the rule if, and the premise appears here in green. And under the line, we have the conclusion of the rule. So, if provided that t1 evolves to t1 prime, then if t1, then t2 else t3 evolves to if t1 prime, then t2 else t3. These rules let us evaluate programs. They give the meaning of each program that is synthetically valid in this language. The syntax of programs is given by the grammar that defines terms t. So if we have this program below, right here, what is its meaning? You will notice that there is only one way in which we can evaluate the term below. It starts with the construction if true. Rule e if false cannot apply in this case because that rule expects something like if false. And rule e if cannot be applied neither because it expects an expression after the if that could take a step. But true cannot take a step. So the only rule that applies is e if true. Notice that we could have a different system, for instance, with a new rule e then that evaluates the then branch first. In this case, we would have two different ways to evaluate the program. But fortunately, this rule does not exist. And given the rules that we have, there is only one way to evaluate any program. We can prove that later. The derivation of our program yields a tree. You can see the tree in this figure. In this case, the tree has no branches. It's more like a list for each derivation rule has at most one premise. But we could have rules with um, two or more premises. And from this notion of trees, we can do something called induction on derivations. The height of the tree is well defined, and it always decreases once we look into derivations of premises. So we can do induction on this height, we, something that amounts to do induction on the derivation tree. So, if we need to prove some property 
about a derivation, we can assume this property to be true for all the subderivations, and then build the final fact from this assumption. We will see some examples, no worries. Let's start our session of examples with this theorem. Can you show that our semantics is deterministic? In other words, there is only one way to evaluate any term in our programming language. This evaluation rules appear on the right. How can you prove the theorem for these rules? Hint. The proof is by induction on the derivation tree. We must show that each evaluation rule satisfies the theorem. Can you reason about the first two rules, that is, e if true and e if false? Well, for these two rules, the reasoning is rather simple. They require a specific shape of terms on the left side. We can simply inspect the rules and we will see that there are only well, there is only one shape that enables each one of them. Now, what about if? How can you demonstrate the theorem for this rule? This rule has a premise, namely that t1 evolves to t1 prime. But if we have t1 arrow t1 prime, then t1 cannot be a value. I mean, neither true nor false, for these values do not evaluate to anything. But this premise is one level closer to the root of the derivation tree than the final term involving the if than else. So we can apply induction. Assume that the theorem is true for t1 arrow t1 prime, but if the theorem is true for t1 arrow t1 prime, then t1 prime is unique. And if that's true, then if t1 prime then t2 else t3 is also unique. I have mentioned before that terms can be in normal form. A term in normal form is a term that cannot change. There is no rule that evolves it. In our current system, if a term is in normal form, then this term must be a value. We have two values, true and false. Can you show that this statement is, is true? I mean, prove that if a term is in normal form, then the term must be either true or false false. We can apply structural induction on the definition of the transformation rules. If t is not a value, then it must be an if-then-else expression. We have three rules that apply on if-then-else terms. If t starts with if true or if false, then either one of the two rule, first rules, that is if true or if false, applies on it. So there is a step that we can take. Otherwise, then we have that the if then else starts with some t1 that's not a value. But by induction, this term must take a step. If it does, the rule e if then applies. One question. How can we evaluate a program until we reach a normal form? We can define a transitive closure of the evaluation rules with this purpose. We denote it with this star next to the arrow. So the transitive closure of the evaluation rules is given by three inference rules. You can see them below. If you want, you can stop the video and read them over. Now, one question. Do you think that if we apply multi-step evaluation on any term, we will always reach a unique result? Would you like to think about it? Indeed, we get a unique result. This is a corollary of the theorem of determinacy that we had seen before. Something interesting. We can show that the multi-step evaluation of any program that is synthetically valid in our toy language terminates. Would you like to try to prove this theorem? We can prove this theorem by doing induction on the size of terms. Do you remember that function size that we had defined in the previous class? We can show that evaluation always reduces the size of terms and that any term can be evaluated, unless this term is a value. So if the size is 1, then the term is a value, and the term is already in normal form. Now if the term has size greater than 1, then either it starts with if true or if false, or if 
some other term that's neither true nor false. In the first case, rule e if true applies, and we are done. In the second, rule e if false applies, and in the third, well, that's more interesting. If we have a term if t1 then t2 else t3, then t1 can take a step. We can assume by induction that the evaluation of t1 terminates. In this case, as we had seen before, either it terminates with true or with false. And in neither case, one of the two rules, if true or if false, will apply at the end. We can augment our language with the arithmetic rules. Here they are. Now we have two new types of values, 0 and suck of n, where n is a number. I have defined them right here. And we have seven new evaluation rules, which you can see on the right side of the figure. One thing that happens once we mix the Boolean rules with the arithmetic rules is that we can now have stuck terms. These are terms that are not in normal form, but that are not a value either. Can you think about an example or multiple examples? There you go, a number of stuck terms. All these terms in red, they are not in normal form. I mean, they are in normal form meaning that there is no way to evaluate them using our rules. However, they are not values. So we say that they are stuck. One thing very important, before when we had only booleans, all the terms in our language would always evaluate to a value. Now have stuck terms. Can you think on what are the implications of mixing booleans and integers? I mean, why now we start having stuck terms, whereas before we didn't have them? And with this last question, we close this class on operational semantics. In the next class, we shall talk a bit more about operational semantics, showing the two main branches of it, small and big step semantics. Thank you.